Um, David, Russia, rogue states or not? It's very easy to label anyone a rogue state. I think it's, uh, it's got elements of a, a, a mafia-run economy. Um, but... But do you, it might be easy to label it, but do you think it is, in your view, a rogue state? <sighs> the way international politics are, anyone who doesn't agree with you is a rogue. But um, I'm, I think you have, to, you have to sometimes just pick a side. And I'm a supporter of Ukraine in this conflict. And I, I think for, for decades and decades we have allowed... Um, we have allowed Russia to, to bully us, to use our uh, economic system, and this time we have to put up our boundaries. So, yeah, I, 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 I think they are, and I also think they, we have to ask ourselves, what, what is Rishi doing? He's, he's asserting himself in the international uh, political marketplace, and that's all right. Yeah, they're, of course they're a rogue state. Right, so you agree with Rishi. Peter Hitchens, do you agree with him? No, I, Russia is obviously a horrible state, particularly at the moment, but so are a number of other countries with which we do business all the time, notably Saudi Arabia, a country which sends agents abroad to, mm. to, uh, to murder and saw up its opponents, uh, and the People's Republic of China, which is the uh, horrendous political slum uh, engaged in the most horrible persecution of the Uyghur people in Xinjiang, and also an, an, an unending illegal occupation of Tibet, which is very oppressive. So, and yet we, we maintain diplomatic relations with them and, and don't make this kind of fuss. It's, it's selective, and all selective outrage is phony. Uh, so we were terribly exercised about Syria a few years ago because of its undoubtedly appalling regime. But we support the equally frightful regime in Egypt, who are our friends, who throw people into prison for the slightest opposition to government, uh, massacre them in the streets, and generally have nothing much to say for themselves on the, on the grounds of being a nice nation. The whole business of foreign policy is often about doing business with people you don't like, and you don't like you back. What... The problem with denouncing Russia as a rogue state is it does mean that if any m movement m is made towards peace in Ukraine, which seems to me to be desirable from the point of view of the suffering people of that country, then it will be harder for us to take part in those moves because we've started name-calling. It's, it's known in the trade, megaphone diplomacy. It looks good. It plays well on the domestic market, but it makes actual negotiation harder. Do you, I, Peter, I don't do you, think do Britain you, is that important in do you support matters, but I think it's a mistake. Do you support the sanctions against the Russians? No, I never support sanctions because sanctions invariably hurt ordinary people and don't hurt governments. I think they're, mm. they're extremely clumsy and also very, very hard to end. I, I, I met people in Iran completely innocent of any association with the regime there who suffer greatly from sanctions uh, so if not sanctions, many then years what? ago. If not sanctions, then what? In, indeed, if not sanctions, then what? Uh, if, if you, it, there is no point in doing something uh, because you just think something must be done. If you can't think of anything useful to do, don't do it. There are many things which are better not done. Is they're, they're very, this, all these knots that we tie are very hard to undo. crackers. I'm sorry. My, my parents came over from, you know, ran away from Hitler. They escaped the Nazis. And honestly, right, it, the, this appeasement of, of tyrants, and we've got more out there, including Saudi Arabia. You've, you've jumped the track. This appeasement, and it is appeasement. Jumped, we have to do something. Jumped the track. Who's talking about appeasement? You are. No, I haven't mentioned it. Ah, well, you, I, I, I think so. I no, think well, I, I, I've not mentioned appeasement of any kind. And this is the... If anybody uh, ever suggests negotiation, then the, the, it appears that nobody in this country has been taught any history apart from the wives of Henry VIII and the Neville Chamberlain appeasement crisis in Munich. Do you know what the biggest event of, of appeasement in human history was? You're good. Winston yeah, Churchill to Stalin at Yalta, handing over the whole of Eastern Europe to decades of tyranny in return... Which is, which is absolutely in return, the point. In, ...in return for the peace and prosperity of Western Europe... And you would ...in which do that we with... all grew up. The other most... But you do that the, with the, the, Ukraine, striking, with the Ukrainian population. The other most striking episode of appeasement in recent times is the surrender of this country to the, the criminal gangsters of the Irish Republican Army uh, under, under American pressure in 1998, which, is, uh, which is describes the Good Friday Agreement. No more certain uh, instances of appeasement... So don't tell me that because I want people to, I want the end of killing in Ukraine and the end of people being maimed and the end of people being driven from their homes in Ukraine that I'm appeasing. Well, if you don't have sanctions against the wealth, the uh, illegally obtained <gasps> wealth by... But do you, they but, don't work. The, the, wealth, the, the wealthy I, and the powerful escape sanctions. They don't touch them. Well, sanctions lost always, lot. always hurt the poor. Let, Ask let, any Iranian. South Africa. Look, look, at, look, at what happened, look at what happened in, um, look at what happened in Iraq. 
We destroyed a pro-Western middle class in Iraq by sanctions. We did not destroy Saddam Hussein. Iraq was a mistake. But do you think the yeah, sanctions... Sure was. Do you think the sanctions, many would say, of course, they were well-intended, but do you uh, think that they've been effective, efficient? Do you think that they were worth the potential side consequences? It all depends on, on, on whether you think Russia is a rogue state or a mafia state. I see this as organised crime, just like I see with the migration. Um, I, so I'm, if I get, if I use a little bit of a, a constructive empathy and I try to work out what uh, these uh, Putin and his cohorts want, it's wealth, it's power, and this is what it's about. It's not. It's not. I mean, do you not think? Do you, do, are you unaware of the organised crime in Ukraine? Of the oligarchs in Ukraine? Of the enormous corruption I'm completely in Ukraine? Aware you, can't, of... you can't choose on the basis of this. Neither regime is particularly pleasant. In fact, they deeply resemble each other. And yet there's, there's this tremendous side-taking, as if it was some kind of football match. Oh, I love Ukraine, I hate Russia. The two countries are actually remarkably similar in their form of government. Sometimes you have to take a wider geopolitical Well, maybe you view. do, but in that case you should, you should well, do I'm that not. rather Let than using these terms. Uh, if, you let, if you let Russia eat a bunch of Ukraine, if you just let it eat it and swallow it, it'll come for somebody else next. That's well, it. Who, but who's suggesting that? But that, nobody, nobody present here. And is sanctions that. against, if if we're talking about ego, if we're talking about a sense of history, which is what I believe Putin has. He's coming to the end of his his life as he sees it. He wants to leave a legacy. He wants to reunite what was the Soviet Union. If we let him bit by bit, bit by bit, right, slice and dice Eastern Europe, we'll end up exactly with the situation that you very coherently made about Hitler and Stalin. This is where we stop. But wait History a minute. teaches us what, this. What is, the, what, what is the most fundamental lesson that we have all learnt about Russia since February? That the great bogeyman Russia with its terrifying army doesn't exist. The Russian army is a slovenly, incompetent and corrupt body which was incapable of, fulfill, of fulfilling its tasks and is now being pushed backwards. The idea that this army and this country was capable of menacing the whole of Eastern Europe was always a fantasy. But it's only been pushed back. I and mean, now it's you, been shown to be a fantasy. Yeah, but you're saying it's been shown to be a, basically not as strong as they led us to well, believe. But that's I think that's because, undoubted, isn't it? Yeah, but that's only because all of the, well, not all, but most of the Western world has united to push back against them. So now what they're facing is so-called an enemy, not just of Ukraine, but the much broader Western well, world. And well, it's that that they can't sure comprehend. Well, These sanctions who, who's, are who, attacks on bullets. Tell me whose troops, apart from Ukraine's, are engaged against? the Russians in Ukraine? But it's not just about Trump. I'm not talking about no, boots okay. on the ground troops. You know yourself, the military aid, all of the training, I the do. equipment, the funding. Mm. They have come up against a so-called enemy much broader than they would have ever anticipated, perhaps, when they started this thing in February. Well, that's maybe, but the, the, the truth is that's their fault. They should, they, they should have had better intelligence, better planning. The truth is that the Russian armed forces were never as good as the scaremongers said they were. And now we can see this absolutely proven in evidence because they have failed. The Russian offensive against Ukraine has been a flop. Well, Zelensky today, he was talking about, of course, uh, Kherson. He's saying it's the beginning of the end. He reckons that this perhaps is now Maybe. becoming, um, hopefully, to a conclusion. Is it? You tell me. You're